चलो हाई फ्रेंड्स हाई स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज योर फ्रेंड सी ए रोहित ग्रोवर अ फैकल्टी फॉर यू अ मेंटर फॉर यू फॉर योर सब्जेक्ट कॉल्ड सी ए फाइनल पेपर थ्री एडवांस ऑडिटिंग एंड प्रोफेशनल एथिक्स सो एज इन द अर्लियर क्लास वी हैड एन इंट्रोडक्शन अबाउट अवर सब्जेक्ट कॉल्ड एडवांस ऑडिटिंग एंड प्रोफेशनल एथिक्स सो एज आई टोल्ड यू इन दैट इंट्रोडक्शन पार्ट दैट सम पार्ट ऑफ द इंटरमीडिएट एंड आई पी सी लेवल द सेम पोर्शन यू हैव टू कैरी फॉरवर्ड इन योर सी ए फाइनल एडवांस ऑडिटिंग ऑल्सो सो वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट टॉपिक विच इज सिमिलर विच इज हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी परसेंट सिमिलर आईदर यू आर डूइंग इट इन योर इंटर एंड वट डू से आई पी सी लेवल और यू आर डूइंग इट इन योर सी ए फाइनल लेवल मोस्ट ऑफ द पोर्शन मोस्ट ऑफ द पोर्शन इज सेम यू कैन से rather 100% of the portion is same but yes when it comes to ca final as the name suggests that it is an advanced auditing so we have to complete this topic called company audit in a more advanced manner right so without fail without wasting our time let us start with our lecture number 1 for the ca final paper number 3 advanced auditing and professional ethics the name of the topic as you can see that this is your paper number 3 advanced auditing and professional ethics the lecture number 1 we are going to talk about company audit now what do you mean by company audit when we talk about the company audit we always think about one person what is the name of that person that person name is known as auditor what is the name of the person person name is known as auditor now what company audit is going to tell you now in the company audit what we are going to learn we are going to learn section number 138 to section number 148 Now again repeat. What are the sections we have to cover? Section number one hundred and thirty-eight to section number one hundred and forty-eight. Right or not? Now section number one hundred and thirty-eight to section number one hundred and forty-eight. They all only talk about one person. Who is that person? Auditor. Right or not? Now in that, in that, if we'll see section number one hundred and thirty-eight, it talks about one particular auditor. That particular auditor name is known as. internal auditor so what is section number 138 talks about it talks about which auditor internal auditor whereas section number 139 to section number 148 we are only going to talk about which auditor statutory or external auditor i hope everyone is clear so again repeating section number 138 in the company audit scenario is going to talk about the which auditor internal auditor and section number 139 to section number 148 is going to talk about which auditor external auditor so it means out of the total sections in the companies act relating to auditor we have only one dedicated section when it comes to the internal audit right and the remaining section number 139 to 148 are only going to talk about which audit external auditor i hope i am clear about it i hope everyone understood the intention of this lecture and everyone understood the structure of this particular sections of company sec so let us first start with the external audit section number 139 is known as appointment of an auditor what is the first section 139 which talks about what appointment of an auditor but let me tell you one thing ki where we are going to cover section number 138 as we all know that in ca final advanced auditing part we have one chapter called internal audit management and operational audit so anyways we have to do the internal audit in that chapter so we will do one thing we'll cover section number 138 about the internal auditor in that chapter what is the name of the chapter internal audit management audit and operational audit so we are not going to cover internal audit in company audit we are only going to cover who sections external auditors section so let us start with the section number 1 now what is the section number 1 section number first what we have to do is section number 139 let me give you the structure of section number 139 now in the 139 we are going to divide this section into three parts are you getting the point now section number 139 exactly under that there are four sub sections we have to understand section number 139 sub section 7 section number 139 sub section 5 section number 139 sub section 6 and section number 139 sub section 1 all these sub sections only talks about one thing that is called appointment of an auditor they all talk about what appointment of an auditor everyone clear now 
नेक्स्ट विल अंडरस्टैंड सेक्शन नंबर 139 सब सेक्शन 2 now what is section number 139 subsection 2 section number 139 subsection 2 talks about rotation of auditors section number 139 subsection 2 talks about what rotation of auditors then what is section number 139 subsection 8 section number 139 subsection 8 talks about casual vacancy it talks about what casual vacancy are you getting the word? So, what if the auditor resigns or he's died or disqualifies from being an auditor? Okay, what things will take place? That, that thing is known as what? Casual vacancy. So, casual vacancy of a statutory auditor we are going to cover in section number 139, subsection 8. I hope everyone is crystal clear with the structure of section number 139. So, 139 alone under that four subsections subsection 7 subsection 5 subsection 6 subsection 1 talks about what appointment very good and 139 subsection 2 talks about what rotation of an auditor and 139 subsection 8 talks about what casual vacancy i hope everyone is clear now let us understand the first section what is the first section the first section is section number 139 sir how to do this section let me tell you one thing you have to start falling in love with this subject are you getting the point hum log isko itna deep mein, we are going to understand this subject in a so deep manner that i can guarantee you after listening the lectures you will be having a enough confidence in yourself ki, yes i can do wonders in this particular topic called company audit now see let us understand section number 139 now section number 139 talks about what appointment of an auditor it talks about what appointment of an auditor now everyone please tell me when we are using the word called auditor do we mean internal audit or external audit external auditor we are talking about which auditor external auditor or also known as which auditor statutory auditor and also known as which auditor company auditor we are not talking about the internal auditor because for the internal auditor we have a dedicated section called section number 139 right so appointment of an auditor now what are the things we have to do in the appointment of auditor first of all try to learn the structure of the section key what the lawmaker intention was to name this section it is known as appointment of an auditor in government company and in non-government company now how to appoint an auditor in which company we have to understand the appointment of an auditor in which company government company and we also have to understand the appointment of an auditor in which company non-government company okay sir so government company may karenge or non-government company may be we'll understand about the appointment of an auditor now let it be government company or let it be a non-government company let it be a government company or let it be a non-government company in every company there are two types of auditor in every company there are two types of auditor one is known as first auditor of which company government company another one is known as subsequent auditor of which company government company okay sir so let it be government company or let it be a non-government company there are always two types of auditor one is known as first auditor and one is known as subsequent auditor now the same chart we have to draw on the other side also so on the other side which company do we have we have non-government company in the non-government company also there are two types of auditor first auditor and subsequent auditor first auditor and subsequent auditor right sir so it means in totality we have to understand the four different types of appointment criteria one for the first auditor of a government company and subsequent auditor of the government company third is first auditor of a non-government company and subsequent auditor also of a non-government company so let's learn the subsections in these what are the subsection this is 139 subsection 7 what is this subsection 7 this is 139 subsection 5 this is 139 subsection 6 and this is 139 subsection 1 
So what are the subsections? Repeat now. First auditor of the government company's appointment is included in section number 139, subsection 7. Subsequent auditor of the government company is included in section 139, subsection 5. Now, first auditor of the non-government company is going to be covered in section number 139, subsection 6. And subsequent auditor of the non-government company is covered in section number 139, subsection 1. I hope everyone is crystal clear. Let's move ahead. Now, next thing what we have to understand is how to appoint the first auditor of a which company the first auditor of a government company so remember one thing the first auditor of government company is always appointed by always appointed by c and ag sir kya hota hai c and ag what do you mean by c and ag c and ag stands for comptroller auditor general of india what is c and ag Comptroller Auditor General of India. So every decisions relating to audit functions to the government companies are always taken by C and AG. It means, sir, is C and AG going to do the audit of government company? No. Statutory auditors like you and me are only going to do the audit of government companies, but we will be appointed by whom? C and AG. So who will appoint us? C and AG, right, sir? Now C and AG will appoint the first auditor of a which company? Government company. Within within 60 days from date of incorporation or date of registration who will appoint c and ag point number two within how many days 60 days from the date of incorporation or the date of registration of a company now the question is sir first auditor hota kon hai? who is called first auditor now for a newly incorporated company for a newly incorporated company, the person who do the first time audit of a newly incorporated company, that auditor is known as first auditor. So we are talking about the newly incorporated government company. So within 60 days from the date of incorporation of that government company, the first auditor must be appointed. I hope everyone is clear. Who will appoint? C and AG. Within how many days? 60 days from the date of incorporation or registration of that government company. Next point. Sir, what if C and AG fails? What if C and AG fails? Agar C and AG fail hota hai, if the C and AG does not appoint the first auditor within 60 days, then this power will be handed over to board of directors in the next 30 days. Board of directors in the next 30 days shall appoint. Are you guys able to understand? If the C and AG fails to appoint the first auditor within the first 60 days from the date of incorporation then the c and ag delegates this power to board of directors board of directors will appoint the first auditor within the next in the next 30 days right next point so next if board fails if who fails board fails then who will appoint if the board fails then the members of that government company who will take over now the members will appoint on what on the failure of board of directors now members will conduct in general meeting members will conduct a general meeting so members in the general meeting shall appoint shall appoint within 60 days within how many days 60 days so samajh mein sir to first of all tell me what is the section we are doing 139 which talks about appointment of an auditor in which company government company in the government company which subsection we are doing section number 139 subsection 7 which talks about which auditor first auditor are you getting the point it talks about which auditor first auditor and first auditor of a which company government company will always be appointed by c and ag what is c and ag comptroller and auditor general of india within how many days within 60 days from the date of incorporation sir if the c and ag fails board of directors are going to appoint in the next 30 days and if the board fails members will conduct a general meeting and they will appoint in the next what 60 days within 60 days right sir next thing sir what will be the tenure is first auditor ka tenure kya hoga? what will be the tenure of this first auditor the tenure will be from date of appointment till the conclusion of first agm remember one thing after the first financial year will be over you all know that in company law we have already understood in intermediate level about the AGMs that is first AGM and subsequent AGMs. So are we talking about the any AGM or first AGM? 
first AGM. So anybody just try to remember, everybody just try to remember when the first AGM of the company is to be conducted. It is to be conducted within nine months from the end of the first financial year. So government companies first AGM will come or not, which will be conducted within nine months from the end of the first financial year. So whenever they will conduct their first AGM, this is going to be the last day for the which auditor? For the first auditor of the government company. So from the date of appointment, from the date of appointment, the day when he appointed till the conclusion of which AGM? First AGM from the date of appointment till the conclusion of the first AGM, this first auditor of the government company is going to be appointed. So let me give you one small example. Say for example, now listen to this carefully. Suppose BHEL is a government company. BHEL is a government company. Now C and AG, now this B and uh, BHEL company got incorporated on 7 6 2019 what is the date of incorporation 7 6 2019 now tell me one thing when the first financial year of this particular company will be over the first financial year will be over on 31st march 2020 is it correct or not that is the first financial year now say for example c and ag has appointed c and ag has appointed on 8 7 2019 their first auditor so their first auditor was appointed by the cndg on 8 7 2019 now you guys please tell me whether cndg has appointed the first auditor within 60 days or not 60 days will start from where from the date of incorporation so this is the date of incorporation and this is the date of appointment is he well appointed within 60 days or not yes sir so is it a valid appointment or invalid appointment valid appointment so this is called his date of appointment this is called his date of appointment now when the first agm shall be conducted first agm shall be conducted within nine months from the end of the first financial year so say for example this bhel's first agm was conducted when it was conducted say for example if we add nine months to the financial year i think it will come 31st december 2020 am i correct or not so say for example this this people conducted 30th september 2020 this is the first agm date now when this auditor was appointed auditor was appointed on 8th july 2019 this is the date right or not and when the first agm is conducted first agm is conducted on 30th september 2020 so tell me what is the tenure the tenure will be simple from 8th july 2019 to 30th september 2020 i hope everyone is crystal clear with the concept so this is what do you mean by the appointment of which auditor first auditor sir easy or very easy sir very easy there is no thing called difficult Life may do easy hoti. Ya to easy hoti, ek very easy hoti. Apan kya kar rahe? Very easy. Are you getting enough? We are doing the very easy. So this is what brings an end to section number 139, subsection 7, which talks about the first auditor of a which company? Government company. Let's move to the next auditor. Who is the next auditor? Subsequent auditor of a government company. Now, what do you mean by subsequent auditor? Every auditor, every auditor appointed after the first auditor will be known as what subsequent auditor it means second auditor third auditor fourth auditor fifth auditor all those auditors will be treated as what subsequent auditor crystal and clear now again subsequent auditor under section 139 subsection 5 first auditor under section 139 subsection 7 so now we are talking about the subsequent auditor subsequent auditor of which company sir government company so government company means the name should strike to your head who will appoint appointed by c and ag who will appoint appointed by c and ag everyone clear so who will appoint appointed by c and ag now the next question is sir what if the c and ag fails here first of all c and ag must appoint within how many days within 180 days from commencement of financial year within 180 days from the commencement of which year financial year sir how many days 180 days from the commencement of financial year so tell me presently which financial year is going on 2021 now for the 2021 audit 
whether the government company called C and A G has to appoint the auditor or not for the 2021 audit. C and A G has to appoint the statutory auditor or not. Now, when he should appoint within 180 days from the commencement. From what? From the commencement. From commencement of financial year. Now, tell me when the financial year is getting commenced. When the financial year is commencing from 1st April 2020 financial year commenced. So approximately 180 days means what by 30th September 2020 for the financial year 2021 the subsequent auditor must be appointed. Obviously audit will start after getting the completion of our financial year but you have to appoint the auditor within 180 days from the commencement of financial year. Who will appoint? Again government company means what? C and G. Right sir. So within 180 days. Now the next question is sir is there any delegation? Whether board or directors can appoint or whether the shareholders can appoint? Answer is no delegation. No delegation of authority. Now C and AG is only going to appoint the which auditor? Subsequent auditors of a government company. No further delegation. Only C and AG has to appoint within how many days? 180 days from the commencement of financial year. Next point. Next point. Sir, what is his tenure going to be? Tell me what was the tenure of the first auditor? From the date of appointment till the conclusion of any AGM or first AGM? First AGM. But what will be his tenure? From the date of appointment. From date of appointment till conclusion of next AGM till the conclusion of which AGM next AGM are you getting the point first AGM is already over this particular auditor is appointed because AGM held in the next year or not financial year got over 1920 financial year got over right now first financial year 1920 for that AGM got over so up to first AGM, first auditor held the office. Now first auditor will leave. Who will come? New auditor will come. He will hold the office from his date of appointment till the conclusion of what? Next AGM. Now tell me when the 2021 financial year AGM will be conducted? In the 2021 or 21-22? AGM of the 2021 will be conducted in 21-22. So till that AGM, this auditor will hold the office. So it means from date of appointment till the conclusion of next AGM. I hope everyone is clear. So what are the topics we are done with? We are done with section number 139 subsection 7 and we are also done with section number 139 subsection 5. What is 139 subsection 7? First auditor of a government company and 139 subsection 5 first auditor of a sorry subsequent auditor of a government company. Now we have to move to the first auditor of a which company? First auditor of which company? Non-government company. First of all, the tell me, what do you mean by non-government company? A non-government company is a company which is not a government company. Right or not? So, you might be thinking, Sir, ye bahut hi bada award winning answer diya aapne. So, government company, non-government company is a company which is not a government company. So, aisa to phir government company is a company which is not a non-government company. Aisa nahi hota. To understand the non-government company, you should know the meaning of what? government company. So, this means government company ka matlab kya hota hai? Tell me what is the meaning of government company? A government company is the one in which at least 51% of the paid up share capital is either held by central government or state government or combinedly by both. It means that company in which 51% or more than 50% of the paid up share capital is not held by the central government or state government or combinedly by both. That company is obviously known as what? Non-government company. Are you getting the point? So, non-government company is a company which is not a government company. Sub coach is clear. Hai. Hai? Now, we are going to talk about a first auditor of a which company? We are going to talk about first auditor of a non-government company. So, let us understand section number, quote section number first, 139 subsection 6. Understand one thing, sir. What was the difference you found between intermediate IPCC level and CA final? In the intermediate IPCC level, it was allowed Ki even if you are not quoting the section, it was comfortable in the examination. But when it comes to CA final, after CA final, there is nothing. You are going to be a chartered accountant. So, you should know the compliances, laws and regulations. So, you should know which section you have to quote in the exam. But in exam, mein, there is one small tip, free from me. If you are 100% sure, then only quote a section. If you are not sure, then do not quote a section. Are you getting the point? Do not quote the unsure section when it comes to the examination. Say for example, 
they are asking you first auditor of a non government company now see what is the section 139 subsection 6 but you quoted 139 subsection 7 which is for non government or government company government company so it means if you are quoting 139 subsection 7 it means you neither know section 139 subsection 7 nor you know section number 139 subsection 6 and the examiner will get irritated and he will reduce your marks to the minimum level are you getting the point i if you are 100 percent sure then only quote the section number otherwise do not quote the section number that is my uh, opinion to you right so what is a auditor we are doing first auditor of a which company non-government company section number 139 subsection 6 so first auditor again means first auditor means the auditor who is going to do the audit for the newly incorporated company for the first time so who is going to appoint is it a government company or non-government company it's a non-government company so obviously c and ag will not participate appointed by appointed by first auditor will always be appointed by board of directors within 30 days not 60 days first auditor of the government company how many days 60 days but here how many 30 days from yes 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 you are right from date of incorporation or registration date of incorporation or registration of a company date of incorporation or a registration of the company so there you appoint within 60 days but here you appoint within 30 days who will appoint there c and ag will appoint here who will appoint board of directors both are first auditors only but their government company here non-government company next one sir what if board fails what if board fails obviously if the board fails who will come up in the picture members in EGM members will conduct not AGM members will conduct EGM jaldi batao EGM kya hota hai extraordinary general body meeting now whether first financial year got concluded yet not so that's why how the AGM can come AGM comes after the financial year but it is happening during the financial year first financial year so 30 days from the incorporation are over board of director failed to appoint the which auditor first auditor sir kaun lega responsibility who will take the responsibility members members will conduct a which meeting egm members will conduct a which meeting egm 14 days ka notice deke members will conduct the egm and in the egm they shall appoint members in egm shall appoint members in egm shall appoint within 90 days what is the point used within 90 days matlab these 90 days already includes the board of directors 30 days are you understanding the point these 90 days already includes the board of directors which days 30 days it means indirectly how many days next 60 days 30 days of board of directors and 60 days of members so total 30 plus 60 total comes what 90 that's why the word used is what within 90 days i hope everyone is crystal clear so who will appoint board of directors within 30 days from the date of incorporation or registration of the company and if the board fails member will conduct an egm and shall appoint within how many days 90 days or next what 60 days but what to be written in the examination within 90 days next point what will be his tenure what will be his tenure same tenure like the first auditor of a which company government company what was the tenure of government company first auditor from date of appointment till the conclusion of first agm from the date of appointment till the conclusion of which agm first agm so this person also is going to leave the company by the conclusion of the first agm remember one thing it's not the first agm it's the conclusion of the first agm the first agm khatam ho jayegi tab when first agm will be concluded then only he has to leave so from the date of appointment till the conclusion of first agm i hope everyone is crystal clear 100 percent okay let's move to the next auditor who is the last auditor what we are left with subsequent auditor of which company non-government company subsequent auditor of which company non-government company so non-government company what is the section number again quote 139 subsection 1 
so tell me 139 subsection 7 is for first auditor of a government company 139 subsection 5 is for subsequent auditor of a government company 139 subsection 6 is for first auditor of a non government company and 139 subsection 1 is for first auditor subsequent auditor of a non government company now what do you mean by subsequent auditor every auditor after the first auditor is known as what subsequent auditor right now subsequent auditor of a non government company board of directors are not allowed to do anything always appointed by always appointed by members always appointed by members no delegation like in the government company only c and g can appoint the subsequent auditor in the non government company who will appoint only the members will appoint are you getting the point who will appoint only members will appoint members will appoint where in the agm members will appoint where in the agm now tell me one thing whether the first auditor is leaving on the first agm or not yes from the same agm now see in the same agm we are going to appoint a which auditor we are going to appoint a subsequent second auditor so one auditor is going another one is coming in the same agm so members will appoint in the agm right or not to hold the office what will be the tenure of this auditor subsequent auditor to hold the office till the conclusion of sixth agm to hold the office till the conclusion of which agm sixth agm sir sixth agm yes the duration indirectly they are saying that how many years five years from this agm where we have appointed him to second agm one year second to third two years third to fourth agm three years fourth to fifth agm four years fifth to sixth agm five years for a duration of what five years it means sir what is our interpretation our interpretation is sir no auditor either it is government company or non-government company no auditor can hold the office for five years except one auditor who is that auditor subsequent auditor of a which company non-government company so tell me what was the tenure of first auditor of government company till the conclusion of first agm what was the tenure of the subsequent auditor of the government company till the conclusion of next agm what was the tenure for the uh, first auditor of a non government company till the conclusion of first agm and what is the tenure of subsequent auditor of a non government company till the conclusion of next agm or sixth agm sixth agm it means for a period of what five years matlab ek bar appointed paan saal ki chutti you are not going to change the company it means i am not saying you are permanently employed only for five years for the five years you are going to take care of audit assignment of your client everyone clear yes if he is appointed sir what if he is not performing well can we remove him yes removal is also allowed before the expiry of the term his term is getting expired after five years so before the expiry also we can remove him but that we have in another section called section number 140 subsection 1 140 subsection 4 there will understand removal of an auditor i hope everyone is crystal clear okay sir so this is the only auditor who is going to be appointed for how many years sir five years everyone clear we can remove him before the expiry but that is the concern of our another section i hope everyone is crystal clear with this section can you see now the whole section 139 is there in front of you the whole section 139 is there in front of you with all two companies government company and non-government companies under that four auditor first auditor subsequent auditor of both government company and non-government company including their subsection i hope you are liking the presentation and i hope it is going inside your head very smoothly also everyone clear up to this point okay now sir section is not over yet section is not over yet now what is the next thing we have to do in this section sir before appointing an auditor is there anything that statutory auditor has to give declaration to the company yes before appointing an auditor every statutory auditor as per company sec section number 139 statutory auditor must give a written declaration on his letterhead to the company 
Now, what are the declaration he has to give? He has to give the four declaration. So, see, what is the topic? Before getting appointed, before getting appointed, comma, a statutory auditor. Just wait. Yeah. Before getting appointed, before getting appointed, a statutory auditor, before getting appointed, it was a little bit of glitch as you all know that internet services, right? So please don't mind. So before getting appointed, a statutory auditor, a statutory auditor must file four declarations orally or in writing in writing four declarations in writing to company sir we have not read that it is there you have to file four declarations in writing on your letterhead to the company now after getting appointed or before getting appointed sir tell me one thing will you tell to the company that you are disqualified to be a statutory auditor after getting qualified after getting appointed or before getting appointed obviously before getting appointed so before getting appointed a statutory auditor has to give the four written declaration so what is a declaration number one abhi isko dhyan se karenge declaration number one kya hai declaration number one is he is not disqualified he is not disqualified under section 141 subsection 3 what is the first disqualification he is not disqualified under section 141 subsection 3 that will understand second declaration understood and agree to the terms and conditions of engagement he understands and agrees to the terms and conditions of the engagement to pehli declaration kya hai ki he is not disqualified under section 141 subsection 3 then he understands and agrees to the terms and conditions of the engagement declaration number 3 Sir, what is the declaration number three? Declaration number three is very simple. Declaration number three is he is not violating his ceiling limit. His ceiling limit under section 141 subsection 3 clause G. Can anybody tell me ceiling limit under section 141 subsection 3 clause G of company audit of doing which audits company audits. Now this will understand when we'll do the disqualifications. What is the ceiling limit? If you have an idea, you might be having an idea that as for the company sec, which we have learned in intermediate and IPCC level, the ceiling limit of doing the company audit is 20 company audits. How many? 20 company audits. So in this particular declaration he is telling to the company that ki, sir after getting appointed as a statutory auditor for your company i am not breaching my ceiling limit i am within my ceiling limit sir what is the fourth declaration the fourth declaration what he is saying that the fourth declaration what he is saying that no case either in courts or in any statutory authority or in ICAI, our temple ICAI. You know that in the professional ethics, if you are guilty of professional misconduct, case will be filed against you. Or basically, in the fourth point, the statutory auditor is telling to the company, sir, ki mere against koi bhi case nahi hai. no case is pending, no case is pending against me either in courts or statutory authorities or an ICA relating to any kind of professional misconduct.
तो बेसिकली आई एम सेइंग दैट कि आई एम अ क्लीन चिट पर्सन आई एम अ क्लीन फेलो आर यू गेटिंग द पॉइंट तो नो केसेस पेंडिंग अगेंस्ट मी इन आईसीआई और एनी स्टेचुटरी अथॉरिटी और एनी काइंड ऑफ कोर्ट सेकेंड थिंग आई एम नॉट डिस्कालीफाइड अंडर सेक्शन वन फोर्टी वन सब सेक्शन थ्री थर्ड थिंग I understand the terms and condition and agree to it. And the fourth thing, I am not breaching my ceiling limit after accepting your audit. So main keywords, let us understand 141 subsection 3, agreeing and understood the terms. Next one, ceiling limit I am not violating under section 141 subsection 3 clause G. And no case is pending in any kind of court or statutory authority or I say against me. Everyone clear? So this brings some partial end to our section called 139. subsection 5 6 7 and 1 right so this is the four declarations what the auditor needs to give after appointing or getting before getting appointed before getting appointed now the next thing what we have to understand sir is section over no section is not yet over section speaks something more about other things also what does the section say section says that responsibility or you can say duty of company now do we did we appoint the statutory auditor yes sir now what the company has to do company has a responsibility or duty to intimate to intimate the appointment to intimate the appointment of statutory auditor to intimate the appointment of which auditor statutory auditor sir kisko intimate karna hai we have to intimate to the two people company has to intimate the appointment of statutory auditor to the two persons sir who are the two persons one to the auditor himself company must intimate to the auditor ki bhaiya you have been appointed theek hai apna aake appointment letter le jao you have been appointed intimation to the auditor within 7 days from agm when do we have to intimate the auditor within 7 days from the agm now we have to intimate the same thing ki we have appointed a statutory auditor to the roc within 15 days within how many days 15 days from agm but when we are intimating to the roc remember one thing we have to follow the form number adt1 we have to inform the roc within 15 days from the agm ki we have appointed our which auditor first uh, we have appointed our statutory auditor within 15 days from the date of agm when it comes to the auditor within 7 days from the date of agm but when we are intimating to the auditor no adt1 form number but when we are intimating to the roc then adt1 form number now let me give you the idea how to remember this whole section now tell me what is this this is what we have learned is known as this is what we have learned is known as what it is known as appointment of an auditor it means how to appoint an auditor this is what we learned how to appoint an auditor it means can i say that this is called appointment process yes so can i call it as during appointment phase this is a during appointment phase ki what to do what not to do now what is this phase is it during appointment or before appointment this is called before appointment phase this is called before appointment phase and tell me after appointment what we are doing after appointment are we intimating to the auditor and roc or not this is called after appointment phase this stage is known as after appointment it means in the section number 139 only we have the three stages what to do during the appointment what to do before the appointment and what to do after the appointment so that concludes your section number 139 alone are you getting the point in that what are the sections we did we did section number subsection 7 subsection 6 subsection 5 and subsection 1 i hope you guys liked the lecture i hope you guys liked the lecture and i will make sure that ki i will be entertaining you or i'll be making you understand the subject knowledge in the same way thank you so much for lending your patient ears and uh, i expect the same love and affection from you guys which you have given to me on the face to face classes so i hope everything is crystal clear to all of you so that concludes our first section of company audit that is called section number 139 which talks about what appointment so in the 
few minutes we are going to understand the next section called section number 139 subsection 2 which is talking about what rotation of an auditor and section number 139 subsection 8 which is talking about what casual vacancy of an auditor so see you after the 10 minutes of break thank you so much thanks for lending your patient ears again i will borrow it in the next 10 minutes again thank you so much be safe be sound thank you